Hello again Struck Club. I've got some news to share with you, some of them kind of good, some of them kind of bad, but it is news regarding the season and the um, battle pass, the seasonal journey and other so-called by Blizzard post launch experiences. First of all, um, there's information regarding what's gonna be um, in the seasons, how the journey will be, when it will begin, um, then information about the battle pass and what will be in the shop. Last night I enjoyed watching the stream um, even though um, I felt that it, uh, it is specifically um, following a certain narrative where they're trying to spin something that is not great to sound good by omitting the bad stuff and only focusing on the good things and even trying to focus bad things to seem as if they are good for us rather than bad for us like they did with uh, with the PvP. In general, there's a lot to talk but I'll try to make the video short and just cover the, the main areas uh, with a few words uh, and talk about the big issue a little more. So buckle up, um, I hope you enjoyed this video from me and let's go. First, I'd like to just uh, start with a general explanation of um, the season, seasonal journey, how it goes, and then I'll go into details regarding um, certain things. General information is, for example, it's expected to um, to release season one uh, mid to late July. That gives players enough time to finish the campaign so that by the time season uh, 1 begins, which will be like 40-50 days after the game actually launched, um, everyone, I, I, assumingly everyone, even the slowest of us, even the most um, casual one people, would have completed the story and then they can just rush in, start a new character from level 1 with mounts unlocked and stuff like that, everything unlocked, and they can just rush in and start doing endgame seasonal content without needing to complete the story again. But if you haven't completed the story again, then you will have to do it. Um, so again, this gives players time to finish it, and hopefully they do. Um, otherwise, um, they, they won't be able to, to earn seasonal rewards until they finish that story. Other than that, there's other things to, com uh, to consider, such as the season will have uh, something similar to Diablo, 4, uh, Diablo 3 seasonal journey in Diablo 4, which again called seasonal journey. And it will be kind of like a guide um, for the players telling them um, what things they could do. And, uh, and this will be, uh, first of all, there will be a seasonal quest line, but again, more about that um, later. But um, overall, the, the seasonal journey will give you um, all sorts of things um, as a reward for your efforts every season that will be temporary, that will go away. Uh, and for the next season, since you're, since you're losing all the progress, even though Blizzard are saying otherwise by making it sound good that your character um, needs to be remade um, for the next season because um, this old character you would only be able to use in the eternal realm even though they make it sound like it's all good it's actually the opposite of what they make it sound like it's terrible with tofu losing that progress in a way and not being able to reuse my character in the new season like i can with uh, games like grim dawn for example every character is playable on all the new content without needing to re-roll uh, entry level and respec and whatever. Uh, other than that, let's talk about the, the six important things about the season and then get um, each of them covered one by one. There's seasonal quest line. There will be fresh gameplay every season. There will be long-term progression, which uh, again kind of is the seasonal journey. Uh, there will be a quality of life improvement uh, with every season. And there will be a lot of customization with cosmetics, um, new items uh, that would help you um, customize your build, like new legendaries, new uniques, stuff like that. And um, quite often those legendaries, you would actually be able to unlock them for the Codex of Power, but they would be new. Not ones that you unlock from dungeons, but ones that you unlock by completing seasonal journeys. And once you do that, they, they would appear in the Codex of Power. There will also be something that they call aspirational challenges, um, which again, I'll, I'll go and cover um, those in detail bit by bit. I'd rather talk about the Battle Pass now. Um, it might sound a little detached, 
talking about it this early before covering the other stuff. But I think it's better to, to cover this now. So there will be a free and a premium version of the Battle Pass, as we know. Um, and um, there is a third version of the Battle Pass called Accelerated. There are 90 total tiers, which is 27 free tiers. Then um, the premium Battle Pass uh, option, which costs 10 bucks, includes 63 additional tiers, two full sets of cosmetic armor per class, premium currency, mounts, and that premium currency is used to buy cosmetics, by the way, and cosmetic mount armor. Then the accelerated Battle Pass costs 25 bucks, so 15 more than the premium. It includes the premium option, uh, everything from it, but it also includes, it includes 20 Battle Pass tier skips. It also includes additional special cosmetic. Um, and again, all of those cosmetics are set around a team. As you can see from those top secret images Blizzard gave us, the team seems to be some sort of order of unholy knights or something like that. Vampire knights, cultist knights, there are those shard stones. Um, looking uh, red gems spread around there. There are those kind of demonic eyes in some of the items that we can see and in the background. Um, so it could be some sort of cult. Um, it could be the cult from um, that we that we fought that we fought from um, uh, fractured peaks. It could be the vampires we fought in fractured peaks um, all together. Um, that that are the big boss, um, um, the big the big viewers and stuff in in that season as the in the seasonal quest line. I guess we'll find out. But this is uh, I think a safe bet considering the item design is supposed to fit that team. Um, it's safe to say that the images that you're seeing for the cosmetics that they reviewed should be representative uh, of the team that we are to expect from that one season. And um, what I want to talk about is rip the band-aid off, talk about the Battle Pass tier skips. Yes, they are making it sound like it's the best thing ever, but it's exactly the opposite. First of all, there are seasonal blessings. Seasonal blessings, um, in order to do that, I need to talk about uh, the seasonal journey. And let's talk about it now. And now, long progression, the seasonal journey, what is it? It's making kind of like a comeback from Diablo 3. Uh, you will have objectives that you need to complete, separated by act. Each objective gives you favor, and that favor is your battle pass experience. And each act has um, a total completion. So for chapter one, you complete all the objectives, you get a bonus. Well, you don't have to complete exactly all of them, you just need to complete a set number of them. Um, in the screenshot they shared with us, you need to complete nine. There will be more than nine, there will be some that require you to go in the PvP zone, uh, in the fields of hatred, in, in both of them, uh, or one of them, or whatever, um, and you don't need to do those if you don't feel like it. There are plenty of other ways to earn your experience there, your, your favor. And once you earn the favor, you, you level up the battle pass uh, at certain thresholds uh, to a new battle pass level. Um, and once you complete the whole chapter, you get additional rewards like a favor pack. Like, um, you don't even need to complete all of them. You need to complete seven out of nine. So if there's nine objectives, again, you need to complete seven to get your chapter reward, which would give you... Um, some items, some legendary powers, as I mentioned, there will be legendary powers that you will be able to unlock for your Codex of Power that are different from the ones you unlock from dungeons. And again, you get some extra favor by completing those. Um, and now here comes the bad thing that I talked about. Let's rip the band-aid. Here comes what some could consider paying for power, paying to win. It would be that as they said, you cannot uh, earn ash by uh, by just uh, level and by just um, getting the tier skips. So you get the tier skips and you earn uh, and and you earn twenty levels. But the ash requires a level um, requirement of 10, 20, 30, 40, etc. Every ten levels you get an ash. Let's assume you get a total of ten ash. Um, let's assume that's how it works for now. Maybe you get more than 10, 
maybe you get 20 so you can get all 20 upgrades because there's four levels um, in five categories which would be XP uh, earned, um, which would be, um, let me show you those, which would be um, gold earned, which would be uh, rare materials from salvage earned, and which would be duration for elixirs and something that's related to the season that looks more like uh, some sort of um, um, sort of like a brain. You should be seeing that image on your screen now. Um, it looks like uh, like uh, some sort of a brain. Um, which, uh, which is for the team. Um, so yeah, let's say you have player A and player B. They're both playing um, together and they're both focusing on leveling up. Uh, and they've reached a point where they have um, their levels higher than the battle pass levels. Um, let's say um, they are at level 60, but their battle pass is at like level 40 um, and, uh, or, or 39, let's say. And then immediately one of them pays money and now um, he has the level um, 40 through 60 rewards unlocked, let's say. Um, and um, the other person doesn't have them. So this one player already has an advantage. Um, let's say um, they've pushed the levels even further. Let's say that both players are now level um, level 80. Um, let's say there is a case where people would be level 80, um, but their battle pass would be level 40. And one player buys um, the tier skip twice. Now that gives them an even higher advantage. Again, this will not be pay to win and pay to power only if the leveling up and the seasonal uh, experience uh, are equal, but that will never be the case. Uh, in either case, it will be worse. It will be bad. It will be worse if players level up faster than the seasonal pass. And the thing is, players could focus on just leveling, skip the fucking um, whole seasonal journey of grinding um, as much as possible, and just um, focus on the levels, min max their, their their XP, and grind the content that gives them the best experience, and then just pay money to earn um, those, um, those battle pass uh, levels with the tier skips. And that creates a big, massive potential paying for power, paying for, uh, for winning. Keegan Quark, with all the respect, uh, when she was uh, saying that there is no um, paying for power, when she said you cannot pay for power in Diablo 4, she was smiling. All the things that affect gameplay are only in the free track. Hmm. Right, right. You may not uh, pay for power in uh, Diablo 4. She was laughing. Maybe she knew she was lying to, to us uh, in our faces and, and she couldn't hide it and started laughing. But um, yeah, I'm not buying this, um, this um, bullshit level requirement being enough to prevent people from abusing the system. Players are creative. Uh, it took me two minutes, maybe even less than two minutes to, 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 to consider this. And I've been saying this for months. For months I've been speaking about how this level requirement will not be enough. Ever since they introduced the battle pass several months ago, probably more than a year ago or so, um, I did say, okay, it's good. They have um, some sort of requirements, but that won't be enough. What happens if people are progressing equally and one just gets that um, that skip and and is now um, earning extra boosters to go to experience or whatever. So yeah, this is the bad stuff about it. Uh, I don't think there is much more bad stuff to talk about. So from the from here on, uh, I should be talking about the positives of this. Now let's go back to the six pillars and in particular the seasonal quest line. Yes, we do know there will be a specific seasonal quest line, and we know that this seasonal quest line um, will be uh, attached to a certain team. And as I mentioned, you see the team of this season seems to be um, connected to to some sort of demonic, cultist, uh, vampiric, maybe looking uh, um, items. You see, we have some nice looking crossbows with that golden. Um, serrated. Uh, we have that sword that looks as if it's an extendable sword. Uh, we have a hammer. We have some sort of um, 
two-handed axe maybe and, and a nice viking looking helmet so could it be related to some dwarves or vikings could it be related to some order of knights uh, or could it be related to a dark order like a coot um there's many ways to guess uh, there's also those horses that we saw that give you some sort of uh, un unholy knight kind of vibe for it so we'll see how how um that goes but overall um this would be um, something nice, a little bit of extra um, new stuff uh, to look forward to every, um, every season and a little bit of war and story behind it. Another thing that um, is confirmed is that there will be fresh gameplay. They will try to, to mix things up, um, hopefully better than what Diablo 3 is doing because Diablo 3 is very bare bones and very boring so far. Um, in terms of seasons, um, just um, a puny um, mechanic or two, uh, maybe maybe something new to, to to give you some extra power creep after um, your max level, and that's just boring. Even the current season seems pretty um, basic to me. Uh, I hope they do better than Path of Exile, and I hope they do better than Diablo 3, but in my opinion, I think the way um, they're explaining things, it would be something like um, not as... Not as, uh, as much as Path of Exile, um, not uh, as little as Diablo 3. It, there would be kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, we'll see how it goes, but at least there will be fresh gameplay. At least there will be uh, mechanical changes, uh, meta, meta shifts, new items, new builds, uh, stuff to do. Who knows, eventually maybe new classes, but that's um, not connected to seasonal um, fresh gameplay. Uh, it's game fresh gameplay um overall i think it's fun um that there will be something new but we need to see how fun um and how fresh this new gameplay will be they're also promising there will be a lot of quality of life um again balancing uh, adding new things um new features um we'll see uh what that quality of life will translate into um because again um, quality of life is a very broad term, um, it's a favorite term of mine, uh, but there's very uh, many ways one can bring quality of life, such as removing the shitty respect costs, um, that would be a massive quality of life, um, that probably only 1% or 2% of the player base would not agree with. Um, so, this quality of life will be mostly um, a back and forth community, feedback, developer, iteration, community feedback, developer, iteration of what they think is reasonable feedback. Um, now, what remains to be seen is what would Blizzard consider reasonable feedback from all the um, weird, uh, completely power opposite feedback they will be getting. Because with any game, there will be people with power opposite opinions, power opposite um, requirements, power opposite taste in um, game design. Um, so, which direction Blizzard will um, be nudged forward? Would they listen to the vo vocal 1% um, um, min-maxer tryhards? Or will they listen to the 99% of not-so-hardcore, uh, more casual um, player base? Um, remains to be seen. The final thing you can expect from a season, obviously, is the customization. There will be, uh, actually that's not the final thing, that's the second to final thing, customization, uh, reinforcing that character fantasy. This is where the shop comes, and this is probably one more area that there is a little bit of uh, negative to, to mention, um, um, that they're trying to spin that negative of being good. Yes, in the shop, there will be hundreds of transmogs, um, um, well, in, in Sanctuary there will be hundreds of transmogs, uh, weapons, pieces of armor, armor sets um, that you can earn without uh, buying them from the shop. And in the shop there will be probably tens, dozens and that list will grow um, that will rotate. So that's the negative. You don't get every cosmetic available to you um, all the time. So they're using uh, annoying bullshit fear of missing out to uh, make you feel like, oh, even if I don't get it now, I'm going to miss it. Who knows when it will be back in rotation. I want that cosmetic. Again, cosmetics are cosmetics. I don't care much if uh, a player looks like Bilbo Baggins or whether they look like um, Sauron. 
uh, it doesn't matter to me what they look like. Um, in fact, um, a self-respecting developer would allow you an option to hide players' cosmetics um, if they are not from if, if they are shop cosmetics to hide them and replace them with something basic, so that you don't see um, any microtransaction cosmetics on your screen uh, if you don't want to. But that's not the reality of games. Games are designed in a way that uh, you see other people's cosmetics, so. Um, that the the weaker uh, the weak-willed people would want to spend money, but I'm all for spending money on cosmetics and supporting the developer if you like the game. If it's a free-to-play game, though, not a buy-to-play game where you have to buy the expansions like Grim Dawn um, and like what uh, Diablo 3 was and so on. So the the negative here is that there will be a script that will customize the shop storefront depending on what classes you play and what builds you play or, or what uh, items you have purchased. So if the game notices you're purchasing uh, certain items things around Spectra or, or, or bloody things or, or um, something that um, looks like, um, like it came from a certain region, like from a cold region with all the fur around it, uh, if, if the game notices that you um, are looking at certain items and you're purchasing certain items or just browsing certain types of items, it will try to rotate similar items uh, to those uh, in terms of category or in terms of class. For example, you're playing um, only a sorcerer. Okay, it will start showing you more sorcerer stuff, not only sorcerer stuff, but more. So there will be class agnostic cosmetics um, earned from the battle pass. But the ones from the shop are meant to reinforce class specific fantasies so there will be more cosmetics unique to that particular class um, that you might be after uh, in general it will be more class specific there will be still um, general stuff but uh, uh, particular class related cosmetics um, will be more common in the store where the ones from the battle pass again um, there will be ones that are um, general for all classes there uh, which again, another reason to try and buy the battle pass. So, so this script that will rotate um, the stuff that you see in your shop, which would be different than other people based on what you play, is very, um, very creepy. Uh, <laughs> and it's very uh, predatory uh, and very desperate attempt to try uh, and do that. The best way to handle this would be make all the cosmetics permanently available all the time and make battle pass cosmetics that you have missed maybe those those ones um, could return on certain events um, in case you missed a certain um, battle pass in case you couldn't play a season and earn those rewards um, then those should be the ones that do rotate every now and then um, to, to, to know that people okay it's not the end of the world I will be able to get that one um, some other time Overall, they compared in-game and uh, shop cosmetics. Um, they showed us uh, a few of those for the classes. And yeah, they I do like some shop ones more than in-game ones. But uh, in general, I think um, I also love... Um, I think it's 50-50 whether I like the shop ones that they showed more than the in-game ones that they showed. Um, again, it's a matter of taste and preference. Some people like uh, pizza with pineapple. Others think it's an abomination. Uh, which one of the two you are, it's up to you. Aspirational challenges. Um, there isn't that much that they said. Yes, there will be a mysterious level 100 capped boss um, and other big challenges. This is me uh, quoting. Other new big challenges, um, there will be those. And yes, players will have to tackle um, those other new big challenges um, every season. But the thing is, those will be balanced around level 100 characters who have all their Paragon points and have, um, let's say, a well-rounded build in a good shape in terms of gearing up. So that, that's the balance you would expect from those aspirational challenges. A level 100 boss and uh, other types of uh, content that is designed around uh, maxed out, fully decked, characters 
Um, if it sounds fun, um, then definitely you'll enjoy it. I know that I'll be looking forward to those from all the stuff that's in the seasonal content, those aspirational challenges uh, will be the stuff I'm looking forward to the most. Um, so hopefully um, they don't disappoint. To get notified when I upload more content like this one or other builds and guides for water and not so water games, you can subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to not miss out on notifications. As well as uh, keep in mind there's something called memberships on YouTube which lets you be a paying member for my channel to get access to perks such as emotes and badges made by me as well as the option to get one-on-one uh, -on -one tutoring for the very basics of Adobe Photoshop, Premiere and After Effects. And memberships can be cancelled at any time if you no longer want to be a member. Uh, thanks for watching all the way until the end. Struck up, keep it cool, until next time and goodbye.